ago, they ran riot over the Cherry and Whites. Tomorrow's game at King's Home offers a chance for revenge. We've got 15 players who've got to perform at their peak. That's the only way to beat Bath in a game like this. I think we'll be able to do it. I'm not overconfident, but fairly confident that if we can get that effort there, organisation, we've got a fair chance. country giants that'll provide Gloucester with an extra edge. Two years ago they were roundly trounced by Bath in the final. Even a friendly meeting between these two sides has extra spice. After a week of worrying over fitness, Ian Smith is just happy to be leading a full strength side. Being an underdog at home doesn't worry him. To be honest, the, uh, the past form uh, goes right out the window against Bath especially because uh, it's all on the day. Uh, we probably beaten Bath more times than any other English side, so uh, we know what it takes to beat them. And uh, we'll be doing our utmost on Saturday to do uh, exactly that. The bookies may not fancy a Gloucester-Leicester final, the rugby purists might just prefer it. where the prospect of a tie between those fierce rivals, Gloucester and Bath, had brought the crowds out en masse. Gloucester had to make a change at Hooker, where Kevin Dunn replaced John Hawker, injured in last week's league match at Oral. But fit again after injury were Tim Smith at full back, Neil Matthews at fly half, and in the pack, Bob Phillips at tight head prop, David Sims in the second row, and Paul Ashmead on the flank. Bath were at full strength, with Phil de Glanville recovered from injury, partnering Jeremy Guscott in the centre. In the pack, Victor Ubogu, an absentee last week, was restored at tight head prop. Your commentator is Alan Wilkins. The responsibility for refereeing this match rests with Mr Chris Rees of the London Society, Rugby Football Union, and this most compelling semi-final between the two West Country clubs, whose rivalry is certainly written into rugby folklore. A really daunting atmosphere here at King's Home. 12,000, perhaps a few more in this packed ground. Barnes with the restart. And that was a little ricochet. Sam Masters doing the tidying up and already an early penalty against Gloucester. Diving in and holding the ball, not releasing. And John Webb, the Bath and England fullback to kick for touch. And that's a good kick. Not that he lacks confidence, but that'll do John Webb a lot of good at this first kick of the match. Taken by Ogubu. Ogubu with a lovely peel on the back of the line up towards Gloucester's post. Bath need quick ball. Hill screaming for it now with the feed. On to Barnes. Barnes with the shapes for the dummy drop goal. Tries to run around Matthews. Gets a little tied up and the referee has penalised the Gloucester three quarters for standing offside. Four minutes gone and the first penalty and the first kickable penalty for either side and it falls for Bath. Barnes then with the first responsibility of putting points on the board for the visitors. And Stuart Barnes gives Bath a 3-0 lead in this Pilkington Cup semi-final. Five minutes gone, Bath lead 3-0. Uh, he's been in the middle of the line out, he's been in the middle of the scrum and this is Graham Dorr Dorr throws long and a Gloucester man goes to ground and Gloucester win it, Matthews now the pass on to Cummins Cummins takes it on and Cummins with the rest of the Gloucester forwards earns a penalty and the penalty is for pulling them all down you can see the signal from the referee he's quite strict and he's expert of the signals 
and it means that Gloucester will have a kick at goal to level the scores. Tim Smith, Gloucester's fullback, to make it level at three points each. He's done it. It's Gloucester three, Bath three, and 13 minutes have gone in the match. Gloucester throw and Gloucester win the line out. Matthews gets his kick in. Now that's a useful one. It's going to give Webb a problem. Now, was Webb taken without the ball? The referee has allowed it to go on. And he's given Gloucester the foot into the scrimmage. Well, it's a marginal decision that when the ball is coming down from such a height and the attacking player has to time his tackle to the point where the catcher is receiving the ball. This scrummage is right in the shadow of Bath's post and Gloucester have won it. Matthews and Kasky. And Smith is in there. So Gloucester without their fullback. But it's won by Gloucester. All the possession going Gloucester's way. And Matthews with a drop kick that puts Gloucester in front. <laughs> 24 minutes gone. And this is Neil Matthews, the England number 21 outside half, and that is a really neatly kicked drop goal that gives Gloucester a 6-3 lead. Richard Hill, spin pass out to Barnes, long pass to Webb, and Guscott with a slip pass to Swift in there, Fallon, Fallon can go all the way here, as Fallon made it, Yes, the referee's arm has gone up for the try. The touch judge was right there. And what lovely play that was by Bath. And the strong running of Jim Fallon. It was some intricate play within the backs. Barnes took it standing still. The long pass to Webb. Now look at the running off the ball. De Glanville with the slip pass to Guscott. Guscott there. Now that's the important pass. And Swift is in there from the right wing. Now Fallon still has 22 metres to go here. The tackle comes in, but Fallon is a very strong man. Stuart Barnes with the conversion. It looks straight. Has it got the legs? It has. What a great conversion by Stuart Barnes. And Barth go into the lead by nine points to six and a half an hour gone in this cup semi-final. Jim Fallon, the try scorer. And that was his 18th try of the season. Redmond goes up. Sims gets a hand to it. Sims takes it on. The, men, the momentum with Gloucester. Well, in just about perfect conditions. And the sun out. And there's a little bit of helping wind behind the back of Tim Smith an opportunity for Gloucester to level the scores Smith he's given that a mighty hoof and it's there as well and Tim Smith Gloucester's fullback with 36 minutes gone in this first half has leveled the scores with his second penalty and it's nine points each Hag goes up for it Back to Hill and Barnes. Guscott. They'll want to clear from here. And that's a fine kick by the England centre. He knew that it wasn't worth taking a risk at this stage. And the whistle goes for half time. And this cup semi final stands at nine points each at the interval. Sean Webb gets this semi-final underway for the second half. And the wind has picked up just a fraction, which will certainly be to the advantage of Bath and their kickers. Definitely picked up. Tim Smith 
as that drop 22 hangs nicely, but it bounces nicely too for Martin Hart if he can get hold of it. Danger cleared by Simon Morris. Daw throws to the back and he finds Ben Clark. Hill and Ian Smith was standing in the way and he's complaining that he was standing in open play as well but the referee has penalised him for standing in an offside position. And the Gloucester captain not at all happy with that decision. Stuart Barnes. And we haven't had two minutes of this second half and Stuart Barnes has put Bath back in front by 12 points to nine. throws to the back to number eight Ben Clark and Sam Masters has got himself in the way as well and perhaps too much in the way Sam Masters it is who's been penalized and yet another chance for Barnes to put points on the board crowd goes up behind the posts and Stuart Barnes extends the lead now for Barr. It's 15 points to nine and 13 minutes have gone in the second half. Two 13s playing by the way with the replacement, that's Don Caskey and number 13 is Mike Hamlin. Dunn throws long and quickly this time. Matthews reaves and jinks and gets through two or three would-be tacklers and it's Chilcott who's penalised for lying on the wrong side of the ball. Tim Smith to reduce the deficit. Oh, he's kicked a good one. The Gloucester fullback has added another three points and his side trails by 15 points to 12, what a good kick 22 minutes gone and it's three points in it in this cup semi-final Matthews little chip and that's quite good but there is Robinson back clearing up and yet it's a penalty well, Andy Robinson seemed to have done all the hard work and he's been penalised for holding on to the ball but now that is such a difficult situation for a player and Robinson knows that perhaps he's been unfairly treated that time. How do you release the ball when you've gone back at such pace? That's the problem when the game is played at such pace. 29 minutes gone and Tim Smith with a chance to level the scores. Curling in, oh it hit the upright but it didn't go through them, that close and the danger is still not over, Smith has got it again, drop kick this time, has he done it, it's gone through, what a magnificent drop kick by Tim Smith, on the half hour and Tim Smith with only the second drop goal of his career and this is how he has brought the scores level at 15 points each. Tim Smith had only ever kicked one in his life and that could be the most important one now. Half an hour gone in his second half and it's 15 points each. Gloucester know that they've never beaten Bath in a cup semi-final. Two previous ones they've lost and that skewed off the outside edge of the boot straight to Edgerton and Robinson and Obugu. Good close knitted work by Bath and their forwards. Hill wanted a bit more distance on that, taken by Morris. Up there was Swift. Sims comes away. Kevin Dunn now. Ripped from Bath's forwards. 
Matthews, or rather Smith. Smith miscues again. Webb returns the compliment, and that's a collision. And the referee has blown. Well, he hasn't signalled a penalty. He's going to consult the touch judge. And indeed, it is a penalty. time with that but it's a chance gone missing and if the scores are level after the 80 minutes then we'll have 10 minutes each way of extra time Hog with a throw Kevin Dunn Dunn onto Sims Sims with a breakaway up to Bath 22 dying seconds of this match but the momentum is lost and Swift clears well, that was a surging break by the Gloucester forwards. Kevin Dunn taking advantage of a loose tap and Sims outside him. And Sims showing a lot of pace. What a good tackle to by Barnes. Two and a half minutes of injury time and Dunn is thumped into touch by Ubugu. So, we're going to have extra time in this cup semi-final. 15 points each. It is finished. And we're going to have 10 minutes each way. And if, after that, the sides are equal, it'll be the side who has scored tries. And if that instance is taken into account, it will be Bath who will go through by virtue of the Jim Fallon try. The first period of extra time of 10 minutes gets underway. Kevin Dunn throws well through the arms of Scrivens, and it's with Glost, with Bath, and Guscott. And not for the first time, Guscott has sent a huge kick downfield. And that's OK. Barnes and Guscott with lots of space and Swift outside. I think he's kicked it too far this time. Oh, a mix-up by Gloucester in front of their posts. And it's a little bit untidy. And Clark. Clark to, to Glanville, checks back, Graham Dorr, this is so different from anything we've seen in the first 80 minutes, and some obstruction there, players running across each other and a penalty. Well that was some enterprising play, we haven't seen too much of that. Shovels it away to Barnes, quickly. Webb. He wasn't really coming in at pace, and the movement breaks down accordingly. Now, Ben Clark, with such a lot of pace, goes back. But Hamlin, Hamlin with a bit of football, Hamlin to Smith. Gloucester attacking. Hannaford. And a penalty, surely. A mistake by Ben Clark. Clark it was who had bravely gone back to cover. Smith. Yes. And 
Gloucester go in front for only the second time in the match. Tim Smith successful with his fifth penalty goal and it's 18-15. a lovely kick by John Webb we're coming up to the end of this first period of extra time lost the leading 18-15 and that's it no time to take the throw in we've got 10 more minutes and Bath have 10 more minutes otherwise it's Gloucester who go through to the final It's only three points between the two sides. But you just tend to get the feeling that Gloucester have clawed their way back into it and psychologically and with this home advantage, they're just a little bit more confident than the visitors. Up goes Edgerton, what a good take. Chilcott lays it back for Hill. Barnes, Guskett. Long pass to Fallon. Fallon coming in. Good tackle too by Morris. Obugu is penalised for coming round on the wrong side. Hamlin. Mike Hamlin who's on as a replacement. Captain of the club last year. Zone comes alive. Hill backpedalling. Barnes. Guskett. Guskett with a little chip ahead. And a hoof downfield. A mighty collision as well. Now the referee says that that was late, or there's certainly some element of obstruction. And there's going to be a penalty from where the ball landed and it's very kickable Stuart Barnes desperately needs to convert this oh he's made a mess of it lost the players clench their fists Barnes needed that one Bath needed it Five minutes gone in the second period of extra time. There's just five minutes left. Gloucester leading by 18 points to 15. Bath on the charge. Not coming. Bath get the put in. Robinson urging his team on. Hill to Barnes, Guskett, long pass out to Fallon, and Swift, Swift is going to make it, Swift scores, Bath second try, a great try by Tony Swift, and Tony Swift has equaled the Pilkington Cup record of the tries scored in this competition, he now equals John Carr's record, the Bristol player, it was Hill with a long pass out to Barnes. Now Guskett out to Fallon. Fallon makes the room for Swift and Swift in from the right wing. And that's the try. Barnes with the conversion. It's hanging. Tantalizingly, it's there. Stuart Barnes with the conversion. Have Bath stolen it? It's 21 points to 18. And we've got two and a half minutes remaining. Redmond with a giant leap to Dorr. A little bit of spring in the Bath heels now. Just a nose in front and Barnes 
out with a calculator with that one. And the margin is just three points. Barnes with the conversion, putting his side in front. But Tony Swift with his 18th try in this cup competition to equal the record that has been held by John Carr of Bristol. One minute left. Tony Swift. Joint equal try scorer now. And a penalty. Now Gloucester will not want to put this into touch. Hannaford will have another chance to take it because Bath had not retreated the 10 metres. Tim Smith eager to get on with it. He has to. Has Gloucester's chance gone? Can they conjure something from here? They've never beaten Bath in the Cup semi-final before. Barnes will do his best to make sure that they don't do it today. Bravely taken by Morris, stays on his feet, Kasky. Scragged down by Edgerton. Desperate measures now by Gloucester. And we've gone over the ten minutes for this second period of extra time. Webb might even have a go. There's space out there, and it's that man, Guscott. Guscott with Fallon outside him. Guscott, Fallon, with one man to beat. Fallon outside him. Jim Fallon is going to score his second try, and that seals it. Jim Fallon scores his second try of the match, and it's Barr who will go through to the Pilkington Cup final. A dramatic second period of extra time. And you just have to hand it to Barr, and this man, Guscott, he could have put that into touch and ended the match, but he saw a try-scoring opportunity. Fallon, the strong running centre, gets past the tackle of Hamlin. Miles can't catch him, and that try seals it for Bath. Well, he might smile, Jim Fallon, with his 19th try of the season, and this will surely be the last kick of the match. Stuart Barnes will not worry too much whether this doesn't go over but it has and he seals it in emphatic style and the six times cup winners Bath have done it again over their West Country rivals 27 points to 18 and still Gloucester have not managed to beat Bath in a cup semi-final and it's Bath who go through to Twickenham to the final well Andy the scars, they uh, bear witness to a very tough game. How tough was it? It was very physical. Uh, all credit to, to Gloucester. They came at us. I think they gave everything they could do and we managed just to take it and just to get a couple of tries right at the end. When Gloucester went ahead in that first period of extra time, did you think that you'd uh, let it slip? No, we have always have. We always played the final whistle. You know, we had confidence in ourselves that we could score and we proved it. You know, there was a couple of, of good passing movements. We put pressure on and uh, Jim Fallon got in there over in the corner. That was one of the uh, tightest games we've ever had in uh, Bath Cup history and we've had some pretty horrendously tight ones. And obviously, yes, I was involved and uh, when I missed that kick five minutes from the end, it was in a way that I'd rather not have been involved. We were putting the pressure on and the pace was being stepped up. We were very pleased with our fitness and, um, you know, it was one of those games, I, I won't say it was uh, comfortable, but we had that feeling that somehow we were going to pull it round and so it turned out. But you were happy with this performance today? Well, Cup Rugby is all about winning and getting through to the Cup Final. It, you know, it should be a special occasion now. Whoever we play, we don't mind playing Leicester or Harlequins. and White's lost out again to their bogey team. This semi-final will be long talked about at King's Home, a marvellous match between two teams on full charge. Bath pulled ahead in the first half with Jim Fallon scoring the only try. But Gloucester came back from 9-3 and 15-9 down to level the scores at 80 minutes. Fullback Tim Smith was the hero, his penalty kick hit the post, the drop goal was smack on target. 
And the danger is still not over. Smith has got it again. Drop kick this time. Has he done it? It's gone through. What a magnificent drop kick. Smith gave the Cherry and Whites a three-point lead in extra time. They were three minutes away Hill, from the final the when this it. happened. Long pass out to Fallon. And Swift, Swift is going to make it. Tony Swift Smith dashed scores. through to score. It was all over then, and Gets Bath the rubbed Fallon salt into the wounds Gets with the another the late try from feet. Fallon. Fallon outside him. Jim Fallon is going to score his second It finished 18-27, a mighty match for everyone. The Gloucester Bath semi-final was probably one of the most dramatic games of rugby I've ever seen. It's very rare for a game to go into extra time. This one did. Nothing actually went wrong apart from in the last three minutes when Gloucester seemed to be just about edging it and lost. It was heartbreaking. The crowd thought they were there. The players just about, I think, thought they were there. And then that sort of thunderbolt of two quick tries from Bath from what was a fairly innocuous mistake and the dream of quicken in the shadow. One of the game's most flowing moves led to the only try in normal time. Webb began it with de Glanville and Guscott lending superb support. But the final action was left to Jim Fallon, who outran the Gloucester defence to ground the ball right next to the flag. Tim Smith's penalty attempt saw the ball come back off the Bath posts. Smith ignored the distance and sent over a long drop goal to take the game into extra time. Smith kicked another penalty for Gloucester to take them ahead with only four minutes remaining. Bath's reply was to hit back with two late tries and win by 27 points to 18.